Super Raptor here and welcome to a different kind of video for my channel. So this is a video I've been thinking about making for a little while now. Basically, it's just a video to kind of help people who are just kind of getting started with YouTube on trying to kind of figure out some of the basics on how to really get started, what kind of tools they need, and maybe trying to teach you a little bit on how to edit. Now, I definitely don't consider myself to be a professional in any way, but I have been doing YouTube for about a year now, so I have definitely learned a little bit of tips and tricks over the year. Uh, so first, I think we're going to get started with kind of giving you an idea of some tools that will be very useful for you to get in order to, you know, edit videos and whatnot. So the main program that I use to edit is Shotcut. Uh, it's like all, all these th all these tools here that you see they're all 100% free so you can get online you can download them it won't cost you a cent uh, but shotcut is the primary program I use to do my editing uh, some of the other programs you see here is OBS studio this is you're going to be your primary recording uh, program and I'll try to show you how to kind of set up some of these things uh, to get yourself started on that as well now, I tend to use paint.net for most of my thumbnail editing, but if I'm honest, GIMP is going to be a far better one to use. It's just, I kind of got started on paint.net long before I even started YouTube, and I, I know how to use it better than I do GIMP, but I'm sure there's videos out there you can probably use to learn GIMP a little bit better, and it will be a better thumbnail editing program for you to use. Audacity is a program I tend to use for audio editing, so it's very useful in that sense because it actually does a lot better than Shotcut does in its audio editing, which is why I tend to do most of my audio editing within Audacity. All right, and some of these other programs that you see, such as the Free Video Cutter and Pizera Free Audio Extractor, these are a couple of programs that I use extremely rarely. And it's only because once in a blue moon, OBS Studio will screw up and I'll go to throw, say, my main video in for editing into Shotcut. And it says, oh, well, it's not good for editing. And what that usually tells me is that there is some sort of section inside the video that basically where it, it kind of like stuttered. And the best thing for me to do is just to use, say, the free video cutter and cut it out. The problem is with my free video cutter is that it only records or the audio export will only have the desktop audio. So I won't have any voice audio. And that's where Pizera Free Audio comes in because I can extract all other audio uh, options out of the video. And then I can just line it up manually inside of Shotcut. So I'm not going to really get into these two very much because like I said, 99% of the time or more, you won't ever even need them. So anyways, now that we got this out the way, uh, one of the first things we need to do is we need to set up OBS Studio so that way we know what we have in order to get everything else going. Now, as you can see, I have multiple mic channels and there is a reason for that my first mic channel is a mic channel that i have if we go down to properties that uses the nvidia rtx voice now this is something that is very useful if you have a newer nvidia video card because the newer Vi nvidia video cards have this program where it uses the video cards ai to try to get rid of background noise which is the main reason why i use it but at the same time, I also have an individual channel here as well for just the regular mic. And yes, I'm using a Blue Yeti. And the main reason why I do that is because the AI is pretty good, but it does have its times where it can screw up the voice audio. And that's where I need the original audio from, just in case the AI actually screws up the audio. And the second channel, mic channel here, is just my lavalier mic for when I do VR videos. All right, so in setting up your audio, what you're gonna wanna do is right click and then hit Advanced Audio Properties. Now, this brings up all your audio tracks. 
as you can kind of see here, I have two different audio tracks for the desktop, and that's mainly because one of them is my actual desktop, the other one's my VR headset, and then I have three different microphone tracks. Now, as you can see, if you look over here, because, you know, the desktop, I'm only going to be playing one game at a time, you know, I have both of those on a single track. Now, my each and every other microphone track, if you notice, I have clicked on two and two only. This means that the Blue Yeti through the RTX voice will go on to this track. Now, microphone two is my lavalier mic for when I'm recording VR videos. So anytime I'm using my VR, my lavalier mic, it will only go on track three. And then finally, the Blue Yeti direct, you know, original audio recording, I have set on a fourth track. And this keeps them from overlapping inside of the recording and will give you the ability to have individual tracks that you can individually uh, edit. So that's how you would set up your audio properties for your microphone. All right, next what we're gonna do is get into setting up for your video settings. So we need to go into file and go to settings. Go down to your output and go to recording. Now, if you look down here at the bit rate for our video, our recording video, you can see mine is set at this large number. And that's mainly because I record at 2K resolution. And the reason why it's so much higher is mainly because YouTube is brutal on compression. So in order to keep the video quality up, I always record at around one and a half times the required recommended uh, video bit rate. Now, to see what you need for your bit rate is going to depend upon what resolution you're recording at. And you can do that pretty quickly by simply going and doing a quick Google search. All right, as you can kind of see right here, this is the recommended video bit rates for videos. Now, this is like 30 FPS, which, you know, it's fine, it works, but most monitors and whatnot will record, you know, do at least 60 FPS or 60 hertz, however you want to look at it. Uh, and as you can kind of see here, for 60 FPS, it is recommended that I do 24 megabits per second, okay? So in order to convert that into the kilobits per second that you see here is you just multiply that by 1024, okay? And then put that in. And that will set up your video bit rate so that way you can have a much higher crystal clear picture for your videos. All right, and another thing that you're going to need to set up is the different sources of where it is going to capture the video. Now, most of the time, I will use game capture because OBS will detect the game when it's brought up. Now, in a video such as this, as you can see, I have only the eye open for the display capture because, well, we need to see the desktop. So the way you kind of do this is you basically just hit the plus or whatever. There's your window capture your game capture, display capture. All right, so I think that pretty much does it for everything that we're going to need to go over with OBS. All right, so now this is something else that you're gonna to need to do. If you wanna upload videos that are longer than 15 minutes, you have to essentially verify your account. And as you can kind of see here, this pretty much tells you where to go. I mean, you could probably just type this in or you can probably just Google this yourself and click the link and get your account verified. Now, if I remember, uh, after you verify your account, I think it takes something like 24 or 48 hours you have to wait or something like that. I can't remember. There was something like that. It, it was about a year ago, so I don't remember exactly what it was on, but it's something that you have to do to be able to get into this part of YouTube. Okay, so now let's say that you've gotten your video recorded and now you're ready to start the editing process. So one of the first things that you're going to need to do is bring up Shotcut, obviously. All right. And for this one, we're going to do our next Fallout 4 video. So here we're going to do Fallout 
four, ten. It, it can be whatever you want. And by the way, I had to make a custom video mode. Just to, that's at two K sixty FPS. But if you click in here, there's already a lot of different options in here. I mean, they actually go into 4K, but for some reason they don't do 2K, which is why I had to make a custom one. But we're going to go ahead and hit start. And what this will do is this will create a file for your video. So that way you can save it. Now, I've actually already done a lot of the work for this or little, well, I should say the prep work for this. Now, as you can see here, this is my final lies the recording for that fallout video and all you're going to have to do is normally you would just have to take this just drag it that's all you got to do and as you can see it's actually already starting playing now in order to extract your audio files what you're going to want to do is go to properties yeah, let's stop that for now uh hit audio and this as you can see is our four different tracks. Now, since I wanted to extract both our channel two and channel four, which is the microphone audio tracks, all you have to do is just click on whichever one you want and then go down into your list here. Now, I don't know if this is the way it'll be set up when you actually install Shotcut. You'll have to probably move some of these around because you can actually adjust where you like things. Uh, in shotcut even get rid of certain things if you want so you can you can play around with like these little tabs and stuff that lets you move things around i think you can i don't know maybe even drag this might be up here but you can do that and everything set up the way that you like whatever is comfortable to you now for this i would go down here hit export file and then just you know set that's good enough for me whatever hit it to wherever you want to uh, go and then he just hit save and it'll go ahead and export the audio files for you so when you get done with that and say you've got those ready to go what you're going to do is bring up audacity and all you would have to do is pretty much the same thing is just drag the audio file into it so let me see if I can find the originals. All right, so for what I'd have to do is just take the original audio file and just drag it in here. And as you can see, Audacity will go ahead and import the audio file. Okay, now that we've got our audio file in here, we can start editing the audio file. Now, these days, for the most part, I don't really do as much audio editing as I used to. Uh, especially since I have that RTX voice because it kind of knocks out background noise for me. So a big key point to make here, if you can, when you do your recordings, get rid of anything that you can that's causing background noise. Like I tend to have a fan that I usually run in my room, but when I go to record, I always turn it down on like low. So that way it kind of really gets rid of the vast majority of background noise like that. Uh, so the way that you're going to want to do this is say if you do have, need to do a noise reduction, all right, is you're going to have to find a place somewhere in your uh, audio, all right, and you can expand this by holding control and then scrolling your mouse, right? So say we've got a pretty quiet area right here, all right, for about a good 30 seconds. That's more than enough, all right. You want to highlight that, go to effect go to noise reduction okay now from here you're going to hit get noise profile all right and audacity will automatically take that now we want to click on it hit Control a to highlight the entire thing go to effect go to noise reduction it's on reduce and all you have to do is hit okay now like i said these days i don't really do noise reduction because i don't really need it now these are the settings that i personally used to use back when I did do it. So if you want to use that, you're welcome to do it. Uh, another thing that you may want to consider doing is normalizing. Again, something I don't really do these days, but uh, again, you want to highlight the entire thing, go to effect, and then where is normalize? I have not used it in forever. 
Ah, right there. Okay, you can hit normalize. And again, these are the settings that I used to use when I did do normalizing. And to give you an idea what normalizing does is basically, say there's areas where maybe your voice is really low, you know, in volume, and other areas you've got your voice is really high. Basically what it does is it just brings those closer together. So that way it kind of goes at about the same volume. So if you want to do that, you can do that. There's that option. Now, the main one that I really use these days, again, control A, is I like to change the bass and treble. Now, basically what this does is basically just bumps up, you know, the, well, bass of your voice. And personally, I think it helps to kind of make the, the voice audio pop a little bit more. Now, this is kind of the settings I use, but you may want to play with the bass and treble with your own voice because... Well, it may sound better at different, you know, levels for different people. So I would do that and then I would hit apply and there you go. I mean, Audacity will go ahead and apply that to the entire track. All right. It's done doing that. So we can hit close. And from here, all you pretty much got to do is go to file, go to export and hit export as MP3. And then... Basically, just save it wherever you want to save it to. As you can see, like I said, I've already kind of done this part, but so we're not going to actually export this, but that's all you have to do is do that. Hit save. It'll export the new file that's been edited to wherever you send it to. Okay, so now that we're ready to go ahead and make our final recording, the first thing you're going to want to do is go over here and click on Playlist. And you want to put everything that you're pretty much wanting to use in this editing into this playlist so that way you can easily have it readily available for you now for me that is primarily a few different things my intro my main recording and my outro plus my audio tracks almost always it's just going to be those files for me so i'm going to go ahead and just drag these on over here now for your different functions i highly recommend that you turn on snapping. There are times where you may want to turn it off where you know you might want to make some subtle adjustments. And then the other major thing is that you probably want to use most of the time is this. Ripple edits across all tracks. Because with everything lined up and you want to cut out a part of it, this will save you a ton of time because all you have to do is just remove one area where you're editing and that's it. You're good to go. It will literally cut all the things in between and the audio out in between. So we need to go ahead and get everything set up down here. So the first thing we're going to do, take our intro, drag it in here, hit this little button here, and it'll add it into the vid first video track. Take the second one, the main one, throw it in there, hit it again. And our outros takes a little bit longer because it's a much bigger video and hit that in and there we go now we've got all of our tracks in so the next thing we need to do is we need to make a couple of audio tracks so we going to hit add audio track there it is and then we got a second audio no not yet second audio track so we need to add a second audio track in there now we need to go all the way back and go ahead and put in our other audio tracks. Now, this is our one with the RTX voice. That'll take a minute to probably process. And then we're going to want our original audio track in there as well. And this is why snapping is useful because it, you know, makes that easier. Now, here's some things that I personally like to do with my videos. Now, if you I click here and we go to our filters tab and we click on add a filter I can go down here under my favorites is one of the things I do on all my tracks is I put a limiter on it and what this does is this basically keeps the audio from going on that track too high of a point I can set that point so I can hit limiter and basically for all of my desktop and everything these days I like to just take the limit Drop it all the way down to, you know, 20 decibels. All right. And then as for my regular voice track, 
I like to click on them and add a limiter as well. Because again, I don't want to, you know, try and blow my audience's, you know, eardrums out, you know, with a, a shock or something like that that occurs. So I like to try to keep this around between negative 10 and negative 7.5. It does vary, you know, per video because, you know, you got you to work with the background noise as well. Now, usually I keep it there and then I usually will use it to bump the gain. And usually I'll do this between three and five decibels. I think for my fallout ones, I've mostly been doing it at about three. Come on, get on there. Don't make me have to... All right, we're just doing this manually. <laughs> there, three decibels. All right. And we'll do the same thing down here because we want the tracks to be equal in that sense. Ten and three ah dang it there we go three <laughs> all right so that's ready to go now since i don't want both of these audio tracks playing at once what i like to do and if you're going to do it like this you need to do this first thing or you're going to put a lot of work into yourself click on that track go here hit mute so it'll mute that entire track and it'll keep it from playing well the audio from actually coming up and playing. Now, I like to do a fade in and fade out on my videos, so we're gonna click here and go to fade out video. And then on here, well, before we even get started, we need to go to where the actual start is. So if I look at my audio, this is probably around where I'm starting the video at. So we're gonna click here and kind of get it and check out to where exactly I wanna cut it. Super Raptor here, and welcome back to Fallout 4. All right, so, yeah, I'd say probably right in this area, roughly. And then we'll click right here, Split at Playhead. And what that'll do is that'll split it right there on the track that we had selected. And since I don't want anything to happen before this, because we have this on, I can just right-click, hit Remove, and give it a second there it goes all right as you see it also cut the audio tracks out as well so now we're ready to click on this and add in the fade in video so now that's how i get my start that looks a bit like this super right there here and welcome back to fallout 4 and pretty much that will be a lot of how i'll do the editing and whatnot in this but there are other things that you can kind of do like say you want to clip out certain bits of audio so like maybe i wanted to get rid of this background noise or whatever you know that would normally be in it from you know the original well all i'd have to do and i'm just going to do this on the rtx uh track just click on that track where i want it hit split at playhead say i want to clip it to you know clip it out there click on that Select it, and then just hit delete. And it's gone, and it won't be in there. It'll get rid of that audio. All right, so let's say for some reason you're making a video or something, and maybe you want to, you know, put in an image or something like that to overlay. This is why you want to make your main video your first track, your first video track at all times, because any subsequent tracks that you put over top of that well, it will cover over the first. So, let's, you want to right-click and hit Add a Video Track. And if we go up... Oop, hang on. It's struggling to do that. There it is. Okay. So, now we've got our second video track. So, now let's say uh, we want to put a uh, sensor or something over his face or... Whatever. Well, all we got to do is take that, throw it in there. And so now we've just got this. Oh, and by the way, PNG files, make sure like a lot of things that you probably do that you want to put in like that is a PNG file because uh, otherwise you'll get, you know, a full background and everything else. And nobody wants that. All right. So let's say we want to maybe put uh, the Raptor head on uh, this coarser here 
So let's see if we can find where this gets this image changes over. Okay, it looks like it, the video changes over right at about this point. So now we all, all we gotta do is drag this and it'll snap on to that point. And well, let's go ahead and move it. And basically we can play around with this. So say we obviously don't want it facing that direction. We can go to filters and we can click on this and we can mirror it. And now it flips the image. So now we wanna move it over to say that location, right? So we can go in here, go down and hit something like size and position. And then we can kind of uh, mess with the parameters here a little bit, which this one can be a little funky, but it's really not too terrible to mess with. Just gotta kind of shrink it down to about the right size and I don't know. There we go. Now we've got a raptor head. Uh, <laughs> on our courser or whatever and basically you can just drag you know this however long you need it to hit you know wherever it is you want the it to stop so i mean say something like this you probably want to you know expand it or whatever but obviously you know this isn't something i'm putting in this particular video this is just to kind of demonstrate something that you can do if you want to put in an extra overlay somewhere in your video all right so there's one other thing that you might want to really do quite a bit of in making videos, and that is transitions. So it's actually pretty easy to do in Shotcut. All you've really got to do is just take whatever uh, video that you're wanting to do a transition and simply take it over the other one. And as you can see, it'll tell you exactly how long that you're doing the transition down there in terms of seconds. And then you do that and just let go. Now, once you click on your transition you go into its properties and you have a bunch of different options like here this kind of gives you a dissolve so it will just kind of fade into it so that works by if i hit this as you can huh. see wow this it fades over but you can do other things like uh you can do a bar horizontal over it find that Huh. And it goes over wow. that way. So you can use this to do a bunch of different options that you might want to do. And then you can, you know, use this to kind of, you know, the softness, the crossfade, you know, towards which side that you want, different things like that. So there is a lot of options with uh, transitions, but for the most part, they're not too hard to do. All right. So here's going to be like another kind of thing that you may want to do inside of a video and i mean there's all kinds of filters obviously like here under video you can see that there is just a crazy number of different kinds of filters that you can use but i mean say maybe you want uh, to have two videos playing kind of at the same time and you know but you don't want the other one to be completely obscured by it say like i just threw in our outro into here and it'll be over top of the actual video that's maybe playing so i mean say something else that you know might be kind of common that you may want you could go to something like opacity and from here as you can see on this slider as i reduce it you could start seeing both actually playing in here and i'll tell you what let me go ahead and add a mute to this as well but now, say, if I hit the video play, and now it should play both of them, but <laughs> you'll be able to see both kind of going over it. Wow. It's actually making both of them completely obscure. But that's just another example of one other type of filter that's in there. But there's all kinds of them. You can even do green screens uh, with this program as well. Uh, and for a filter like that, basically, if I remember right, you got to go in under video... And I do believe you can use these, uh, the chroma key or whatever. And so if you got a green screen behind you or something, you can use these uh, to do a green screen. So there is that capability as well. All right. So here's one other like little trick that you can kind of do. Say if we go to this like part of the scene, like I'm speaking here where we go in to, well, the water treatment plant here. As you can see, it goes into a loading screen and so say maybe I don't want that. You know, I, I don't want my viewers having to look at, you know, a big blank screen while I finish talking here 
and letting it load. So there's ways that we can do that. We can go in here, just split, you know, the extra audio here at the playheads. Come on, there we go. And all right, now that we've got the audio here split, well, since we got blank audio here from you know other footage well in advance, one of the things we can do is we can just clip out some of that. So we just need to basically split the playheads as well. Just delete these on out. And we can figure and once we figure out, you know, exactly where the screen starts to go blank. And we can kind of do it, I don't know, maybe right there. So we want it to go back at least that far. We can just literally move the audio back over. And there we go. And say now we want to end it at that particular point. We could just split it right here and the audio should go in and the video should look a little something better where we don't have to sit there and look at, you know, a blank screen. All right, well, I pretty well looted everything. Um, so yeah, turns out Brother still did a pretty good job of uh, wiping everybody out. So let's head on inside here and fix up this water treatment plant. And there we go. So now we actually have a, uh, a scene that actually looks quite a bit better. And all we gotta do is go ahead and clip that out. And all this in beforehand, well, we didn't want any of that anyway. So we're gonna go ahead, hit remove, and it's gone. And now we should have our little bit here without anything being actually affected, or at least it shouldn't. All right, so this is actually a perfect example of how the uh, RTX voice can screw up the sound and this is why I like to have a regular audio track So I'm gonna hit the play button and you can kind of hear how on the early end It kind of is trying to suppress the audio when in reality It's actually my voice and it kind of catches on too late and kind of messes up with the audio All right. So I don't want it to do that. So this is the reason why we need that second track because now I can simply do something like this, just split the uh, playheads and just delete this on out. Click on this. And this is why you wanna hit mute on all of them because otherwise you have to go through and hit mute on all of them. So if you do it right away, doesn't matter how many times you split it, it'll always have that feature on. And now all I gotta do, unmute. And now if we go back, it should sound a lot better. All right. And there you go. Much more natural the way it should be. So that's a good reason, a good example of why you want to always try to keep your original audio as well if you're going to use uh, RTX voice. So for the most part, I'm going to go ahead and I want to edit this video. And then I'll bring you back in kind of towards the end because, well, pretty much I've shown you mostly what I'm going to be doing the entire time, just basically clipping out parts.
All right, so at this point, I've pretty well got everything edited the way I want, except the only thing I need left to do is put in a teaser. Uh, that's just something I like to personally do, and I've already selected a small little snippet at around the 32-minute mark. Uh, right here, yeah. So what we're going to need to do is turn off uh, the ripple across all tracks because I've noticed that when I had that on the first time I did this, it kind of screwed up the uh, the audio video sync. So we're going to copy it, go all the way up to the front, and then paste it. And as you see, it'll just push the video track. Now, we need to go ahead and do this for the audio as well. But for this particular one, I actually had to use partially RTX voice and partially the original audio. And uh, that's gonna, that kind of is going to make it where we kind of got to make it take an extra trip back to grab that additional audio track. So let's see. I'm pretty sure, yeah, this should be it. So we need to copy this, go back, drop it in at the front. Now we need to do this for both audio tracks, otherwise it will desync everything. So make sure we do that and then go back and grab the other little part. And then we go back and we can just paste it. And there it is, it's synced up there. Paste it again, oops, undo that because we want to go on this track, the bottom one. There we go. And now that we've got it synced up, we don't want two tracks, so we can delete these, and it keeps everything still in line, and it should all be good. So we want to save it, and we're pretty much ready to go, so we should be able to have our opening. We're up this high. There's one thing that we can do in Power Armor that's always fun. And there we go. We've got our teaser to the opening of the video. Goes into our intro and then leads into the main video. So this video is all ready to go. And the only thing I've got left to do is to basically export it. Now, when you go to export under this, this little title here, uh, you might want to hit this button, make sure that it's checked. It's use hardware encoder. What this will do is it'll use your video card to help speed up the exporting of the video so it'll save you a bit of time so i recommend you have that on otherwise all you got to do is go down here hit youtube export file save it and it's good to go you basically just gotta wait until it's done and then you can just upload it to youtube so i'm gonna go ahead go through here and see about finding you know just something to make a thumbnail all right since i figured the main focus of this particular video is the courser I think we're going to just take uh, a screenshot of this. So basically I just need to hit Alt, Print Screen. And the main reason I got to hit Alt, Print Screen is because I have a dual monitor set up. So hitting Alt, Print Screen tells it just the main monitor, not both. So we can go ahead and drop that down. Bring up Paint.net. Hit Control v bring it in. All right, so one of the next things I want to do is hit... Uh, File, New. Now, we want to change this to a 720. And the main reason you want to do 720p uh, instead is mainly because if the video or, should I say, the picture uh, file size is too large, YouTube will reject it. And I've never had a problem with 720p, but I have had it when I've done like 1080p thumbnails. So, and besides, we don't even want the entire frame here. We only want part of it so i'm going to go ahead and copy this over paste it in here we want to keep the canvas size and since uh, our courser is our main focus i'll well, just try to get that about centered now another thing i want to do is i want to bring in the fallout 4 logo so i want to bring go in and bring that into a new file all right so now we have the fallout 4 logo of, as a png just need to copy that, go into this. Now, what you want to do here 
is uh, you want to actually go down here and uh, add a new layer. That way it doesn't go over the background. You can just delete it if you don't like where it's at without having to redo this part. So we want to go ahead and get control V, drop it in there. And uh, I don't know. I think I usually keep it on this side, but in a way, the uh, I think I might go over here. You know what? Screw it. We're just going to go with the regular plan and just stick it there. All right, so now that we got that set up, all I got to do is go in, hit save as, and you need to change this to a PNG. Save it. Hit OK. Flatten it. And it overwrites it. And there you go. There's my thumbnail. All I got to do is uh, go in and basically just drop that on it. All right, so now all I've got to do is hit upload thumbnail, hit untitled, open it bam there we go now we got our thumbnail and then uh i'm gonna go here select fallout 4 for my playlist hit more options go down uh youtube does tend to learn what kind of videos you upload since it knows that i upload gaming videos it automatically does that and all i have to do is put in fallout 4 select it and that way people can search uh, the fallout 4 title and my video can pop up in it now it's pretty much just a waiting game until this uploads. Once we get the standard definition, uh, we'll be able to go in here and we'll be able to add end screens and cards and stuff like that. Although I don't ever really do a card, but I do an end screen. And pretty much from there, you go on to the next page. And once it's ready to go, you can hit, you know, public or whatever. You can schedule it and then you're good to go. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward from here. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much what I got uh, to give you for a basic introduction into kind of setting up a YouTube, what kind of programs and stuff that you need. Uh, and I hope the video was very helpful to you. So anyways, if you liked the video, as always, be sure to pounce on that like button. And if you haven't already, join the pot by subscribing below. Have a good day, everyone.